Good afternoon, everyone. It's, uh, it's a great honor to be here with all of you again today. A lot of familiar faces. Um, I want to thank, obviously, Chairman Chief, the owner, who on last minute notice helped us secure this amazing restaurant, along with Sammy and the entire team, uh, who have put together such a great gathering of such amazing Winnipeg folks. And it's an absolute honor to be here today. It's my first time in Winnipeg. What? Um, as an Ontario Member of Parliament, it's been a warm welcome, and a very, very warm welcome. I've loved being here for the last few days and meeting every single one of you. Great, strong work ethic. Um, and we're joined by two great individuals. One we have is James Bazan, who is the Member of Parliament here in Manitoba. So please, for James, a common sense conservative who's working for the Parliament, fighting for Manitobans every single day. And you may have heard, there's a by-election coming up, or it started today. And they'll be voting happening on September 16th in Elmwood, Transcona. And we have a great, great, great candidate for us who will be the next common sense conservative member of parliament, someone who is an electrician by trade, who has been a hardworking family man, who understands our shared values of faith, family, and freedom. The next member of parliament for this great riding, Colin Reynolds. Yeah. Hi everybody. Um, just a little bit of background. I've been married for 29 years. I have um, three adult kids. I've got two small grandchildren, six and three years old. I've been an electrician for 20 years. I'm also a proud member of IBW 2085, and I'm really looking forward to representing all the hardworking people here in Elmwood Transcona. And we have a special guest, which I think needs no introduction, but uh, <laughs> like us, he comes from humble beginnings. He's a uh, adopted son to two school teachers. His wife, Anna, which you, many of you may have met or seen, uh, comes from an immigrant family, hardworking, blue-collar family like many of ours. Um, he believes in that Canadian dream. I know many of you came to this country looking for that Canada's promise where you worked hard, you played by the rules, you could get anything you want in this country. And I think that dream is broken. But our leader understands what it means to be a hardworking Canadian. He wants to reward your, you know, each hard work that you guys do, bring back powerful paychecks, and make sure he puts you back in charge of your life. Please join me in welcoming our next Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Trudeau. Thank you very much to our Common Sense Conservative team for joining me with all of you today. Arp and Canna, our newly elected member for Oxford, uh, James uh, James Bazan, Rashad was our old Rashad. friend. Bazan, <laughs> Bazan uh, is our Shadow Minister of Defence and uh, represents Selkirk Interlake Riding. Uh, he's a rancher, a farmer, and a lifelong Manitoban. And of course, we have Colin Reynolds, a hardworking, common sense Manitoban who was born and raised in this community, who has a wonderful family and a great career as an IBEW electrician. And he, if ever you, you have a problem with it, whether it's a power outage or uh, the line comes down, this is the guy you call. He will turn the lights back on. That's and, right here. Uh, 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 you got the power and the energy uh, to represent this community, and we can't wait till you're a member of parliament with us, Colin. Thank I'm you very excited. much for joining our common sense. Well, I know Canada like don't really to turn the Canadian lights on. Yeah. 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 It's great to be back in the prairies. I grew up in Calgary, Alberta. I was born to a 16-year-old single mom who put me up for adoption to two school teachers. But they taught me that in Canada, it didn't matter where you came from, it mattered where you were going. It didn't matter who you knew, it mattered what you could do. And that's the country my wife came to as a refugee from Venezuela. It's the country we want for our kids and yours. But it's not the Canada we see when we look around us today. After nine years of Justin Trudeau and the NDP, everything is broken and Canadians are broke. Life costs more. Work doesn't pay. You make it, Trudeau takes it. Housing costs have doubled. Crime, chaos, drugs, and disorder are common in our streets with a 356% increase in extortions after Trudeau and the NDP lowered the penalty for extortion with a gun. We see stolen cars, 
see more drug overdoses, tent encampments have popped up everywhere in beautiful communities that used to be pristine and safe. But the good news is, life was not like this before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone. <laughs> We're going to turn the hurt that he and Jagmeet Singh have caused into the hope that Canadians need. And this is important because, you know, Jagmeet Singh and the NDP, they told you they were going to represent Manitoba. And years and years ago, the NDP fought for working people. But not anymore. Singh needs his pension. He, uh, he needs till January of 2025, as an MP, to qualify for his $2 million pension. And that's why he signed on to a coalition with Trudeau to keep him in power. He doesn't want the election to happen until next year. And so he sold out his community, sold out the people, sell out Singh. But we don't want someone who's working for his pension and helping Justin Trudeau. We want someone who's working for the community and fighting for you. And that's what we're going to get. We have a common sense plan to ax the carbon tax, which will lower gas, heat, and grocery bills. It will help our truckers stay in business and deliver their goods more affordably. We will lower income taxes. So hard work pays off. We are the only party that voted against the recent capital gains tax increase that is punishing all of the entrepreneurs in this room for their sleepless nights hard work, constant sacrifice, and stress. So what Trudeau and the NDP say to you is, you know, if you start a business, here's what you get. You get to stay up all night worrying about how you're gonna pay the mortgage and the bills the next day. You get ulcers because of the stress. You might get robbed. Uh, you might have to uh, risk the possibility of bankruptcy. That's the bad news. And the good news is if you succeed, then you can give all of your success over to the government uh, through a higher 66% capital gains tax. It's like having a silent partner in the business. You didn't know you had him. He didn't show up to help you run the business. He wasn't there the sleepless nights. Uh, he didn't do any of the work. He didn't sweep the floors with you when you were But then when you go to sell the business, he shows up and say, did you know I've been in business with you this whole time? I'm here to get paid for all your hard work. That's what this new tax increase represents. We want to cut taxes, and I will be designing a bring it home tax cut. Lower, fairer, simpler taxes. Lower tax on investment, work, and making things in Canada. Simpler, we're going to cut administrative and compliance costs of the tax system. So you spend less time filling out paperwork and dealing with auditors, more time serving customers and hiring workers. Fairer, we're going to cut off the corporate welfare checks to large multinational corporations. <laughs> And, and, and we're going to shut down the, over, the overseas tax havens and use the money that we get from that to lower the tax bill for working class people. Lower, simpler, fairer to bring home production and paychecks to this country. Furthermore, we're going to have homes. We're going to get homes built. We have the fewest homes per capita in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. Why? The worst bureaucracy. I was just talking to the investor at Parker Lands. This guy wants to build 2,000 homes next to the brand new sta tr train station there that was built for those homes. But the city's blocking him, so he has to go to court. The court actually smacked the city down, said you have to let these homes go ahead. They're appealing. So they've already had to pay this guy $5 million of your money for lawyers. And meanwhile, the city itself is spending money on its own lawyers to fight against housing so your kids won't be able to afford a home. I'm going to require municipalities, free up land, speed up permits, and cut development taxes as a condition of getting their federal money to permit 15% more home building per year. Every federally funded transit station will be required to have high density of housing around it, or the federal money will not flow. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, 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 and we'll back the trades by giving more red seal material to our schools for our kids to start their pre-apprenticeship in their mid-teens, by giving a tax fairness for traveling trades workers act so that when trade worker goes from one site to another, he can write off the cost of food, transportation, and accommodation. And we're also gonna back our professional immigrants. We have 20,000 immigrant doctors, 32,000 immigrant nurses banned from working in our hospitals because they can't get a license to practice. 
In the States, a nurse can get an international exam and be working in two weeks. We have red seal in the trades. I want to bring in a new blue seal in the professions so that a professional, a professional who comes here can take a test, prove they're qualified, and get to work as a doctor, nurse, engineer, or architect within 60 days. That's powerful paychecks that you're going to bring home to happen in safe neighborhoods. And right now the neighborhoods are not safe. Why? Because of the catch and release system. Catch and release criminal justice allows the same repeat violent offenders to be free within hours of their latest arrest. To reoffend. once again, we're going to make anyone who has a long rap sheet of offenses ineligible for bail, house arrest, or parole. It will be jail, not bail jail, not bail. Secondly, we will crack down on the borders. We will bring in high-powered scanners for all the shipping containers that are coming in and go out to stop criminals from bringing in drugs and guns and taking out stolen cars. Every single shipping container should get scanned. We'll pay for it by canceling the gun grab. Uh, you know Trudeau and the NDP want to ban your hunting rifle. They want to ban sports shooters. Complete waste of money. They have spent $40 million to take firearms away from licensed, law-abiding, trained, and tested people. And you know how many guns they've got? Zero. They're even asking Canada Post if, the, if Canada Post would come and pick up your gun, knock on your door and say, I understand you have a hunting rifle, I'd like to take it away. Canada Post said, to hell with that, we're not doing it. We deliver mail. But our hunters, <laughs> our hunters are not the risk. It's not Grandpa Joe's hunting rifle that's shooting up our communities. I want to protect Canadians from criminals. Trudeau and the NDP want to protect turkeys from hunters. You decide which makes more sense. And finally, there's the drugs. Right now, governments are giving out hard drugs, and that's causing more and more drug violence. We just saw the recent document release, National Decriminalization Plan. By it's a document of Health Canada to decriminalize all drugs everywhere. It would be easier to get crack, heroin, and cocaine in your neighborhood than a candy bar at a corner store. Common sense conservatives are going to ban the drugs. Stop giving out tax-funded opioids. Treat addiction to bring our loved ones home drug-free. We're also going to stand up for your freedom by repealing censorship laws, by allowing independent media to have a competitive voice, we're going to fight for a direct flight to Amritsar. Direct flight to Amritsar. So that you don't have to go to the We've already met with Air Canada, Air India, and the High Commissioner, and they're all open to it. Singapore, Malaysia, UAE, Uzbekistan, Italy, UK, they all have direct flights to Amritsar, but Trudeau did an open skies agreement that does not fly to Amritsar, even though we have the biggest expatriate Punjabi community in the world. This is ridiculous. Bad for business, bad for our people. We're going to fight to fix that as well. We want more freedom through less government. We want you to be in charge of your life. We want this to be a country where anyone from anywhere can do anything. Whether your name is Chang or Charles, Martin or Mohammed, Singh or Smith, Polyev or Patel, as long as you work hard, you should be able to achieve your dreams based on the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring Let's it Let's bring it Thank you guys so much. I know you may have some questions, but we're going to do some uh, quick photo line, and you can ask those questions as well. I want to show him one thing. Yes, okay. come in the have photo line. Have you ever seen people stealing your mail from the mail? Let's line up here. This is one.